Want to bet? You can do it at Sports Interaction. It's Canada Sportsbook. It's football season. World Series just oh, wrapped up. Oh, my favorite. Uh, yeah, yeah, Steve, who knows so much about football. Uh, World Series did re- just wrap up, but we do have a lot of puck and a lot of NBA. You can bet pregame. You can bet live and play or on one of the many prop bets made for Canadians by Canadians. Sports Interaction makes it easy to deposit, play, and cash out. So join now to see all that betting has to offer. Head to sportsinteraction.com slash SDPN. That's sportsinteraction.com slash SDPN. You, you were faster. Thank you for doing that because he would have messed it up. Yeah. I wouldn't have. I know the read. <laughs> you know what you forgot? Ontario only, 19 plus. Please play responsible. You guys both made fun of me. Okay, so um, we're starting the show off today in a, in a spot we really didn't expect. Uh, but just before the show started today, Jake Muzzin is out indefinitely. This is according to Leafs PR. And this is real Leafs PR, not Twitter Blue Leafs PR. Uh, <laughs> due to a cervical spine injury, his status uh, will be reevaluated evaluated in late February. So that's three and a half months from now. TJ Brody has been placed on injury reserve with an oblique injury, which is not terribly serious, but enough that he's going to be out for a couple of weeks. Yeah, I'm not overly worried about it. Tavares has recovered from his just fine. They're um, not all the same, but you know. Mac Hollowell and uh, Pondus Holmberg uh, have been called up from the Marlies. Now let's talk about a cervical spine injury. I Googled it. Oh, well, th- mm-hmm. this is the definitive. Here's what it is. All right. Cervical. <laughs> That's really funny. Well, it's this is from the <laughs> Shepherd Center. Hey, hey, hey! Medical students, <laughs> pipe down. Adam's got it. Well, I, I'm just telling you what Google tells me, and it's not like no, I know it's not giving that's, me medical advice. That's it's just, the be all end all. No, how do you fix it? Cervical spinal cord fix injuries. Uh, this will not tell you how to fix it. Cervical spinal cord injuries often involve permanent, complete, or partial loss of sensory function and many associated complications. As is the case with all injuries of the spinal cord. Injuries located higher on the spine will be more severe with uh, high cervical spinal cord injury often being fatal. So, uh, Jeez, now, okay. now, okay, hold on, hold on. I, this I is, that you did it's that. It's covering a wide berth. Clearly, we're yes. not talking about something that's near fatal. Yeah. But often involved permanent or complete partial loss of sens- sensory function is pretty fucking serious. Yeah. And you have to think that this is serious enough that they're not even going to look at it for another three, three and a half months. Well, they're, mm-hmm. they're going to reevaluate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, the rumor that's been bubbling amongst the writers who are in the know and the people who cover the team on day to day is that Muzzin's most likely done for the season because they've been hearing about like what he's been injured with and now yes. it's come out and that he probably is not going to play this year. So hearing that he has this annoying. injury, it, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's a, shame and i don't even know what the recovery is or what the path forward is the first thing i thought of was uh what jack eichel did with the disc replacement but i don't even i don't even know if that's what needs fixing so um i wish wish him the best of luck Mm -hmm. great uh, player in his recovery i it'd be great if he came back but if you're the leafs you just got to sort of go, okay, what's the path forward now? Right, exactly. What's the path forward? So you got to figure it out. And let's bring up a term that I've used in the past, the buoy. The boy, boy? Buoy. Buoy. It's the, it's the worst word in the English it language. Is. It is. B-U-O-Y. Yeah, that in, that in the word key, which is spelled Q-U-A-Y. Queen's quay. That's right. Yeah, no one, anyway. Um, Martin Marinchin used to be the buoy. And Martin Marincin is a better defenseman than Mac Hollowell. The Leafs are... Oh, shit. <laughs> are you sure? I, tr- I would trust Martin Marincin in certain situations at the NHL level. Mac Hollowell, bless him. He's not ready. He's also 26. Like, he's I just, probably never going to be I ready. just don't know. Matt Hollowell is 26? I think so. Yeah, he's been on the Marlies forever. Might be, might, uh, he might be younger than that. Might be 25, 24. Holy shit, he's 24. There you go. Okay, he's 24. Damn, we've 26 been this, is pretty different. We've been doing this a per- long time sometimes. I forget, I forget that he was drafted a long time ago in yes. 2018. You know, the was. Ottawa Senators placed... Nikita Zaitsev on waivers oh. four days ago, and the Leafs had the opportunity to just claim a reunion. Free. Well, okay. <laughs> Speaking of buoy, <laughs> it's not that. No. So, it, it, but just the reason he gets the call mm-hmm. is they have no options on the right. Before right we now. move on to what they could probably fill in, where the the options where they should come from. 
I think the point needs to be emphasized that it was a failure on Dubas's part to not listen to CJ and move off of Jake Muzzin <laughs> come June when mm-hmm. this the path was all there for this instance to happen. And that contract is something that they that contract space is something they could, could have really used in the summer. And now we see all of the uh, tertiary signings that they tried to do with all these entry level deals and word. And and uh, million dollar contracts they handed out that didn't work, and that if you just moved off of Muzzin earlier, you could have solved a lot of Leafs issues. Yeah, so, including a net. So there is a cascading effect there. I think Jesse, I, I think you are correct because um, part of the part of what they wanted to do was give this another ride. And are you making a trade for Matt Murray if you're not? sort of hamstrung by other contracts on the on the on the lineup. And I think, you know, no disrespect to Jake Muzzin the person, but you had a pretty serious resume of injuries there that were piling up. And, you know, he started they said he started training camp with a back injury. So they knew that this existed. And then of course it gets aggravated in like his first game or second game or something like that. Yeah. Well it wasn't the back though, it's his neck. Well, I know, but that's what they said. They said it was a back injury. He was, right? he was. Did they? they I'm pretty sure that's how they started training. He was on the men kind of all summer. That's what they know? said. Yeah. I, I just. So, well, here, here's what I'm looking at, right? Because listen, we've been critical of the Leafs for that non lack of trade. <laughs> and I, I don't regret that. I think it is perfectly valid. Um, here's, here's what I'm going to throw out there. The. Predators made a somewhat similar deal with the Tampa Bay Lightning. The Lightning sent Ryan McDonough to the Predators for Philippe Myers, who was with the Marlies, actually, um, and Grant Mismash. So that's his name. Read it. <laughs> I know. I know. Um, Philippe Myers made over $2.5 million. Mismash, former second round pick from 2017, but didn't pan out quite the way they thought. No. So. Essentially, the Preds, or sorry, not the Preds, the Lightning get nothing. Yeah, um, they do. Yeah, they do, they do get Philippe Myers. I think they extended him and gave him a pay cut. But or cap whatever. space is what you're looking for. They they got very little, and my guess is the Leafs would have gotten even less. And by even less, I mean they would have had to. They would have had to get rid of Jake Muzzin. They would have had to pay to get rid of Jake Muzzin. So I suppose then the other benefit is, okay, now he's on LTIR and you can make moves. And the question that Chris Johnson wrote, and unfortunately, the CJ show was recorded before all this news came out this morning. Um, yeah. But Chris, Chris put this out on Twitter. And he said, um, the, the question the least will have is if Jake Muzzin is coming back for the playoffs. And, and Which they, would they, be awesome. I don't know. Yeah, that'd be cool. I don't know, guys. I don't know. Well, what if you're uh, no, able no, to... No, 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 If you're... Ha- no, hold on. Sure. If you can make a move mm-hmm. for a player that's healthy, if you can make a move for a player that's healthy, or Jake Muzzin might come back and might be healthy for you, but probably not. Because the idea that Jake Muzzin is ever going to be fully healthy again, I don't know. Pretty... The, the thing about coming back for the playoffs is that you could do both because the, the cap doesn't count in the playoffs. So you could true. make the move throughout the regular season, yeah. have it, and you can just cheat it. I guess that's true. Yeah, guys. you're right. You're right. That's a good you know, point. The, the, the worry is if he came back early, like if he wanted to come back in February, like he's going to be reevaluated, then you got cap trouble. Well, then you say to, the, but, you say, then you say to him, Jake, you're not coming back. Right. You, you just delay it to the playoffs, then that's yeah, free yeah, win. I guess. That's free body. Yeah, you go yeah, into the playoffs with Jake Muzzin as your seventh defenseman, it's great. potentially. Yeah, if there's an injury, then you bring him back. Yeah, that's pretty great. But don't let this not stop you from making a deal that would be an issue that's and that's my fear here is that i want that i think it's pretty clear and we'll talk about goaltending in a bit but it, it's pretty clear that they're going to have to do something at some point this year as any team does um but you you i don't know that you can go through this year as great as jordy ben was on saturday hoping that he's going to be able to fill the gap with you know you were gushing oh man he was amazing <laughs> we'll talk about it but but like riley brody you got Lilligren and you've got Hall on the right side. It's not great. It's there's, not bad. And there's no Brody right now, which is why Mac Hollowell was called up. They don't have guys on the right. Yeah. And it's guys bad. on the right are the hardest guys to get to. Yeah. Like they were playing Philip Crawl there. Right. And we've talked about this, you know, when, when things went a little sideways, a little squirrely to start the season, 
the Leafs had a lot of finger crossing. Mm-hmm. Like, man, if, <laughs> if all these guys stay healthy, we could be good. And, and they are very good. But there were a lot of fingers crossed. They are now down two goalies and two defensemen. And it's kind of looking a little bit like we got to, something has to happen here. Does it have to be a major move? No. But it does open the up, up possibility with Muzzin's contract on LTIR, you could make one. That's the yes. option that they didn't right. have when Obey Kubel wasn't claimed and they were right up against it in the cap. The Leafs have, you know, for as luck, ha, for, blah, for as for, bad. A, for as <laughs> unlucky as the Leafs have been, they've also gotten extremely lucky. We talked about this before the show. Obey Kubel claimed off waivers right before they needed it. Right before they would have had a U of T goalie backing up. Well, imagine, yeah, Samsonov goes down and you still have Obey Kubel's contract. There's yeah. nothing you can do. Or a Matt Murray uh, before he was ready. Yeah. Backing up, which is probably more detrimental to the health of the, the organization. Um, they've done a lot of flying by the seat of their pants and they've gotten lucky so far. I do think they need a move here. Now, what do you think, if, if you are going to make a move, what kind of, where's the focus? Is it, obviously it's got to be defense or goaltending or both, but if you were to focus on one, what's the more pressing need? Um, to get through the season, I think a true answer at left wing would oh, be the answer. You mean like a, a not Kerfoot and, and everybody else? Well, not just this musical chairs bullshit. Mm-hmm. To get through the playoffs, this decor can't be the decor that you try to win a Stanley Cup with. The left wing thing is so difficult because everybody wants to trade Kerfoot. And they've been trading him for a year now. But you can't move off of Kerfoot and just upgrade Kerfoot. No, that's not I how know. They the didn't, trade and they works. also didn't have the cap space to do it, right? Yeah. Now they do. So the Leafs have some very interesting decisions to make because I think they're really gun shy about trading picks, and I don't see how they improve without doing that. Um, well, they did get burned on picks on that Felino deal, right? Oh, so just never make one again. Well, you, it's you know enough I mean? to make like, you gun shy, but you also traded for a guy with another bad back. Who's doing fine now, by the yeah. way. Yeah, yeah. Felino's been great. <laughs> yeah. So um they yeah, they might have to mortgage parts of the future. Um which Does Dubas Carey won't be here. <laughs> well, <laughs> gotta like, get that contract extension. But done. it's funny though, because he's such a process oriented guy and he I well, I wouldn't blame him for not wanting to do it if he doesn't see a great option out there. Yeah, of course. He doesn't see of a course. Great, like I, Nobody wants to dance right now, I don't think, either. He, no. Well, and everyone, the, 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 the hottest phone in the greater Toronto area right now is Dubas's, um, and it's people calling him. Yeah. It's people calling him. Hey, I got a proposal. Can I no, read well, the other one's the Canucks. Like, well, that's not, are, well, they're the GTA. not in Toronto anymore. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you mean in <laughs> the GTA. Yeah. 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 Okay. They're in Boston. Yeah. You meant they went to Boston the to lose there. Yeah. <laughs> but like, is, is there a dance partner there if the Canucks and Leafs are both reeling? Yeah. JT Miller would be awfully nice Dude, in Toronto. <laughs> they don't, no. <laughs> well, not that. <laughs> Jeez. Well, yeah. So if you get JT Miller, you have to acquire like three defensemen to offset. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, the Canucks don't really have. There's nothing really. Uh, they're not great on defense. The only guy I'd be interested in, and the Canucks probably shouldn't part ways with this player, is Luke Shen. I was going to say that. 